guest right, the tradition of hospitality by which a man may offer no harm to a guest beneath his roof, nor a guest to his host. Though this tradition was first brought to Westeros by the First Men, the Andals also have a similar tradition. But their tradition of guest right wasn't held as dear as the First Men held their own. Because the North has a higher concentration of First Men blood, the tradition of hospitality and guest right is considered more important in the North than the South. This is the one notable custom that the Northmen hold dearer than any other. Maester Egbert writes that crimes in the North in which guest right was violated were rare, but were treated as the direst of treasons. In the North, only kinslaying is deemed as sinful as the violations of the laws of hospitality. But what is guest right? What are the rules and how does it fit into the Song of Ice and Fire world? To better examine guest right, let's look at guest right in all of George R. R. Martin's works related to the Song of Ice and Fire series, first with a few events that predate the time of the first book. In 42 AC, during the reign of King Magor the Cruel, the third Targaryen king to sit the Iron Throne, Prince Aegon and Princess Rhaena sought protection from King Magor, their uncle. They found it with Lord Lyman Lannister, who protected the prince and princess under his roof. Lord Lannister even refused King Magor's demands to turn over the couple. This can be seen as a powerful example of guest right. Lord Lannister found the protection he gave to his guests, Rhaena and Aegon, so important that he was willing to defy a king to keep guests right. And it wasn't because he was planning on adding swords or soldiers to put Aegon on the throne, a throne that was rightfully his before Magor took it. Lord Lannister wouldn't bring any swords or men to the conflict until Jaehaerys, the last brother, and who would go on to be known as the Old King. At this point, he wasn't trying to be political in his support of them or declaring Magor wrong. He was simply upholding hospitality. Guest right would become important again during the Dance of the Dragons that occurred from 129 to 131 AC. In the Dance of the Dragons, Rhaenyra Targaryen, the half-year queen, was fighting a war to win her throne back from her brother, Aegon II Targaryen. During this war, she would discover that Nettles, a base-born dragon seed, was sleeping with her husband, Daemon Targaryen, while they were stationed in Maidenpool together. This didn't go over well, and she ordered the Lord of Maidenpool, Lord Mouton, to have Nettles killed for treason. This wasn't taken too well by Lord Mouton or his men in his service. A knight of his remarked, the old king would never have asked this of any man of honor, to which the Lord of Maidenpool responded, these are foul times, and it is a foul choice this queen has given me. The girl is a guest beneath my roof. If I obey, Maidenpool shall be forever cursed. If I refuse, we shall be destroyed. When they speak of killing both Nettles and Daemon, Lord Mouton says, and murdering two guests in their bed is twice as foul as murdering one. I should be doubly cursed. And again, we see a willingness to defy the monarch, whether it is a king or a queen, to uphold the laws of hospitality. During the same war, some could argue what happened between Prince Aemon and Prince Luke at Storm's End could be considered guest right, but Lord Boris says Prince Luke is protected as an envoy and no blood would be shed beneath his roof. But outside of it, he has no problem. So I consider Lord Boris's words more of a political protection, hey, I don't want these two conflicting parties in my house, versus guess right. We're also unsure if Aemon had time to eat or drink before Prince Luke's arrival. Because of this, I just don't consider this event part of guess right. Now, let's fast forward to the novels. In the first novel, A Game of Thrones, we learn something new about guess right. When Bran Stark is brought in the hall at Winterfell, he sees Rob seated in their father's high seat wearing ringmail and boiled leather and a very stern face. In front of him in the center of the room is Tyrion Lannister with his servants and four men of the Night's Watch. Rob says, Any man of the Night's Watch is welcome here at Winterfell for as long as he wishes to stay. However, Rob has an unsheathed sword across his knees, the steel for everyone to see. Bran thinks even he knows what it's meant to greet a guest with steel, and Tyrion remarks that Rob is welcoming the men of the Night's Watch, but not him. So here we see a way a lord may make it clear he is not giving guests right, an unsheathed sword across your lap for everyone to see. This tells the would-be guests they are not welcome here and guess right will not be given. In the next book, A Clash of Kings, Gilly tries to convince Jon Snow to take her with him and the Black Brothers when they leave Craster's keep. Jon Snow says they are guests in her father's hall. Jon doesn't want to dishonor Craster or bring harm to their host. Gilly responds, Not you. I watch. You never ate at his board, never slept by his fire. He never gave you guest right, so you are not bound to him. 
George is making it clear here that for guests' right to work, you must partake in your host's food. This becomes very important in A Storm of Swords, where guests' right and how crucial it is is brought up several times, preparing us for the ultimate breaking of guests' right, and for some people, our hearts. In the next book, A Storm of Swords, Mance Raider, The King Beyond the Wall, talks about guests' right and how the laws of hospitality are as old as the first men, and sacred as a heart tree. Here you are the guest, and safe from harm at my hands, this night at least. This dialogue helps drive home how important guest right is to the first men, and most likely showing why guest right is so important in the North. They retain much of their first men blood. Again, George is setting up why a future breaking of guest right will cause such a disheaval. We also hear of guest right at Craster's Keep again in A Storm of Swords. When a fight breaks out and Craster is killed, the Lord Commander, Lord Mormont, stands over Craster's body and cries, the gods will curse us. There is no crime so foul as for a guest to bring murder into a man's hall. To which a black brother, Dirk, responds, There are no laws beyond the wall, old man. While the statement there are no laws beyond the wall is shown to not exactly be true, it is again painting how important guest right is and setting up what is to come. We see the mention of guest right and hospitality yet again when Jamie is brought to Harrenhal before Roos when he was a hostage of Borgo Hote. When Roos Bolton says Lannister's lie, Jamie asks if that is a slight on the honor of his house and threatens Roos with a cheese knife. Roos scolds him, "'Tis scarcely chivalrous to threaten your host over his own cheese and olives. In the North, we hold the laws of hospitality sacred still." To which Jamie reminds him he's a captive here, not a guest. However, in the end, Jamie encourages Brienne to eat the food Roos offers and accepts Roos offering him guest right. And then shortly after this, guest right is brought back up when Rob Stark is heading to the twins to meet with Walter Frey, to offer an apology for marrying another when he was promised to a Frey girl, and to have Edmure Tully marry a Frey in exchange. Catelyn Stark reminds Rob that if they are offered refreshments, on no account refuse. Take what is offered, and eat and drink where all can see. If nothing is offered, ask for bread and cheese and a cup of wine. When Rob says he's more wet than hungry, she continues, Rob, listen to me. Once you have eaten his bread and salts, you have the guest right, and the laws of hospitality protect you beneath his roof. Catelyn, despite not being a northerner, is trying to stress how important it is to be protected under guest right. This could be from her time in the north, but also because guest right is still seen as important in the rest of the Seven Kingdoms as well. They just aren't as crazy rigid about it as the north. Yeah, in the south it isn't a good idea, but they don't consider it on par with kinsling like the north, or so the maesters would have us believe. Rob Stark and his men go to the twins, and after a semi-uncomfortable meeting with Lord Walter Frey, and after Edmure Tully sees his bride-to-be, Catelyn finally says, My lord, food would be most welcome. We have ridden many leagues in the rain. Walter Frey responds, Food, <laughs> a loaf of bread, a bite of cheese, mayhaps a sausage. And Rob adds, Some wine to wash it down, and salt. He agrees, the servants bring in food and wine, and Walter chimes, my guests, my honored guests, be welcome beneath my roof and at my table. Catelyn tastes the wine and nibbles some bread, feeling much better for it. Now we should be safe, she thinks. At this point, George has built up guests right in our heads. It is this big banner of protection that surely a noble lord would never break. Rob is safe. The Starks will have a great ally in the phrase. Of course, then the Red Wedding happens shortly after where Rob... Catelyn and other Stark loyalists are killed even after being protected under guest right, completely ripping out some people's hearts and causing others to throw the book across the room and say some nasty words about George. While this event was traumatic to a lot of readers, we see it is even more traumatic to the people of the Seven Kingdoms. Okay, we learn that guest right is extremely important in Westeros, whether you are below or above the wall, though the North is a bit more extreme about it. Guest right protects the host from harming the guests and the guests from harming the host. However, guest harming guests doesn't seem to be in the rule book so far. Giving food and drink signifies guest right is being given. Burying your Anshi's sword across your lap before they can take refreshments signifies guest right will not be given. But how does one end guest right? Next video, we're going to talk about the consequences of the Red Wedding, how the rest of the Seven Kingdoms responded, how to end guest right, and then, if you're wondering how this relates to the Boltons, we'll later discuss Roose Bolton and guest right, and also Manderly and guest right, guest right in our own world, and at some point the Purple Wedding and guest right. I think I've said guest right about 500 times at this point, and I might never want to see that word combination again. 
Boltons are almost done and then we will be moving on to the Mormont shortly.